Good morning, boys and girls. We're now going to be talking a bit of history. We've covered a lot of geography, and now we're going to be looking at history. And we're going to particularly be looking at the changes in the Limpopo Valley and how did farming societies change and develop over time. Now, the early Iron Age people were named after the materials that they used at the time to make tools and weapons. And the Iron Age followed after the Stone and Bronze Age. And the East African people were producing steel as early as 500 BC. And in Europe, this development happened only in the 1700s. Technology in Africa was therefore far more advanced than the European people and far more advanced before the arrival of the European uh, settlers in Africa. In early pre-Iron Age existence, people were basically nomadic. The farm the local people were, were nomadic and they survived by hunting wild animals, gathering wild plants. And the number of groupings or chiefdoms was small in size. And people didn't regard land as property. And therefore, the, the existence and coexistence between tribes was very harmonious. And no one really wanted to conquer another group. And it was also helped at this point in time by the abundance of resources. There was so much uh, plant matter. There were so many animals available. Um, and people simply followed the, the animals that they hunted as the seasons changed. And this made the nomadic, nomadic life a far more practical way of living rather than settling down in one area. But then around about 2,000, just over a 1,000 years ago, people decided to settle down and they started domesticating animals and plants and growing crops. And these were the first agricultural skills shown by ancestors. You no longer had to rely on the availability of wild animals because you're producing your own food. So farming allowed people to settle in communities, more settled communities. Uh, and this happened from around about 900 AD, where farmers lived in homesteads. Um, and homesteads were largely self-sufficient. They provided their own food and other needs that they had. And there was some trade between chiefdoms. If we look at this map, it's a map where you can see the Limpopo River. And we know the Limpopo River is the border between Botswana and Zimbabwe. And this is where a lot, large amount of these early uh, farming settlements occurred. So societies settled in along the Limpopo River were organized in hierarchical ways. And this basically is a system where one group of people would be more important than others. And people at the top of a hierarchy usually had more power or control than people lower down. In other words, they had more cattle or land so they could control and dominate the others. So cattle and land were a very important resource. Cattle and land were seen as men's property, which meant men had more control than women. And as a result, so slowly the economy started to change. Instead of farming, just farming, uh, the economy included trade in cattle, ivory, gold and other goods. And they used to trade these for cloth, glass beads, and other luxury products that they got from afar. And how did people become more, more powerful? Well, those that owned more cattle and land had more power because they had more things that they could trade with. By having more power, the men were able to make more decisions in society. They were organized into bigger groups. These bigger groups were better for protection. The people also believed that they person in charge of their group, the king, was more powerful and so powerful because his power came from God. They also believed that his power was passed on to the family. So when the king died, his eldest son became king. Kings and chiefs controlled all the economic activities like mining, farming and trading. They decided where people could farm. They also collected taxes and tributes from the ordinary people under their control. So if you were put to work by the king, you would pay him uh, taxes just to say, can we continue farming here? So why did bigger settlements develop in the Limpopo Valley? Well, the Limpopo River is known as the Nile of Southern Africa. A thousand years ago or more, when the summer rainfalls fell in southern Africa, the Shazi River flowed strongly into the Limpopo River. 
It was called the Nile of Africa because the Nile River in Egypt would overflow its banks and left fertile soil which the farmers could plant their crops in and grow many, many crops. The Limpopo River on the west side of the Shazi would overflow its banks. When the water level went down, fertile mud carried by the Limpopo River covered that flat plain, flood plain on either side. And the settlements grew because there was a good food supply in the area. Here's an example of what a floodplain would look like. And once it settled, then you'd have this fertile soil that people could grow crops in. Well, that comes to the end of this particular PowerPoint presentation. The next one, we're going to look more carefully at the different settlements that you would find developing Schroeder, K2 and Mapagorpe. Goodbye.